Some breaking news here. According to CNN, prosecutors in Fulton County, Georgia have discussed plea deals with an additional six co-defendants who have been charged in Trump's RICO case regarding his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. This development comes in the immediate aftermath of the news that Trump attorney Jenna Ellis has pleaded guilty and begun cooperating with prosecutors, joining Trump attorney Sidney Powell, Trump attorney Kenneth Chesbro, and bail bondsman Scott Hall. And by the way, the fact that more co-defendants are now making a mad dash to cooperate with prosecutors is not a surprise at all. Will there come a point where prosecutors won't accept any more flips because they've already got what they need? And, and if so, would that really create a mad dash right now among the remaining co-defendants to go to Fonnie Willis's office to cooperate? Yeah, another great question. So when I was involved in large RICO cases and we would indict more than two dozen people in one of the cases, um, there are times where you start pleading people out without cooperation. Why? Because you don't need them. So for example, all of these bail bondsmen, the sort of lowest rung on the criminal ladder down in Georgia, Fonnie Willis might say, listen, we are so far past what you could have provided if you were a cooperating witness, we don't need you. So they start to make what are called non-cooperation plea offers just to call out some of the folks who are no longer important to what Fonnie Willis is trying to build. Now, the flip side of it is Fonnie Willis might say to people, look, we don't need you anymore, so we're not going to, going to extend you any kind of plea offer. You're on your own. Here's the only thing that will be left for those defendants to do. They can take what we often refer to as a soldier plea. What that means is they can walk into court. They can plead guilty to every count in the indictment just to have it over if there are no plea offers being extended by the prosecutors. But then they are facing a ton of potential jail time if they end up pleading guilty to all counts, including the lead charge, which is the RICO conspiracy count, which carries a mandatory minimum of five years and up to 20 years in prison. So, you know, Fonnie Willis seems to be holding all the cards. And it's just a question of how she wants to play those cards with respect to the remaining defendants. I've even discussed the possibility that all of the co-defendants in the Georgia trial could flip on Donald Trump with my Legal Breakdown co-host, Glenn Kirshner. We've spoken about this in the past, but it's worth reiterating now in light of Ellis's flip. Might we actually see every co-defendant in Fulton County, Georgia flip on Donald Trump here? I think the answer is yes. We may see everybody other than Donald Trump actually accept responsibility for their crimes, plead guilty, and agree to testify against whatever defendants might remain. But with each passing day and with each new you know, guilty plea with cooperation, each new flipper, I think the odds are going up that we may see everybody plead guilty in the Georgia State RICO case with the exception of Donald Trump. And as always, to see more episodes of The Legal Breakdown, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And here's why this is especially important right now. Flipping begets flipping. When we see co-defendants in a sprawling RICO case flipping on an almost daily basis, it sends a blinking red light to the leader of this alleged criminal enterprise that the walls are closing in. Because let's be clear, the only reason that prosecutors are offering these plea deals is because these co-defendants are bringing them one step closer each time to convicting Donald Trump, which raises another complication for these co-defendants who may opt to wait this one out. The plea deals that are being offered now may not be so generous as prosecutors continue to gather the information they need from those who've already flipped. And let's be clear, they've been generous. Thus far, Hall and Chesbro and Powell and Ellis have all walked away with a few years probation, couple thousand dollar fine, and even apology letters. And so those remaining co-defendants should recognize that these kinds of cushy deals may not be around forever. So the option for these holdouts is either go immediately to Fonnie Willis's office to salvage whatever plea deal they can get their hands on, or try their hand fighting the Fulton County District Attorney's Office in a case that is only getting stronger and stronger with each subsequent flip. Not exactly the hardest choice here. Now, notably, according to CNN's reporting, there was no indication that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office is in contact with Donald Trump's team about a plea offer. To that point, I'd actually discussed whether we'd even be likely to see any type of a plea deal offered to Trump by Fonnie Willis's office with Glenn. Would prosecutors ever offer Donald Trump a plea deal? Or is that not on the table because the whole point of these deals is to be able to prosecute Trump to the fullest extent of the law? If I were involved in making that prosecutorial decision, there is no way on earth I would offer Donald Trump a plea deal um, apart from a plea deal that said, you plead guilty to all 91 counts in every jurisdiction 
and you will die in prison, but we might be able to accommodate you with respect to in what facility you get to serve your prison term because the Bureau of Prisons, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, which is ultimately where Donald Trump will serve the sentence that is undoubtedly coming his way. They have facilities all over the country. Some are better than others. And, you know, that might be the only concession I would be willing to make to Donald Trump. I don't believe for a minute that the federal prosecutors in particular will negotiate a plea agreement that would keep Donald Trump out of prison. I don't think that's going to happen because that will serve as no kind of deterrent to tomorrow's aspiring dictator. And frankly, it will serve as no kind of punishment for Donald Trump. I do not think they'll let him get away with home detention because as we've discussed before, that's basically sentencing somebody to you know binge watch Netflix and order DoorDash. That's no kind of punishment for somebody who tried to bring an end to the American experiment. So I don't think the prosecutors are all that interested in negotiating a plea deal with Donald Trump. I think they're going to try to negotiate plea deals with everybody else to ensure that they can hold Donald Trump accountable for his crimes. Which, by the way, should be another signal to those remaining co-defendants that Phony Willis's goal here is to prosecute Donald Trump. A plea deal will not be on the table for him, meaning the Fulton County DA has their sights set on him and will stop at nothing to hold him to account. And so those remaining co-defendants should know that they remain fighting alongside Trump at their own peril because prosecutors will take Trump down with or without them. So while I can't guarantee anything in this case, I do believe we're all but certain to see more flips here and to see them sooner rather than later. The reporting that six co-defendants are considering plea deals with Phony Willis may seem blockbuster, but frankly, it is the bare minimum in terms of what we can expect. At this rate, we're more likely to see a number closer to 18 than six when all is said and done. Meanwhile, knowing that a plea deal isn't on the table for him, all Donald Trump can do is sit by and watch as his lieutenants jump ship to save themselves. And eventually, Donald Trump will be left completely alone to fend for himself, in a case that has been reinforced by the cooperation of the very people who he himself trusted along the way. So if you're wondering why the bus ride feels so bumpy, it's because Donald Trump is currently under it. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.